Good morning, members. I think it's gone half past ten, so we'll just make a start and I'll take this sort of opportunity to remind everyone that the meeting will be recorded for public consumption. Uh, item one, seven apologies. Lucy, apologies today. Good morning, everyone. We have five members present. We are quoted. There's no formal apologies so far, but not present are Councillor Ian Crothers, Councillor Collins, Councillor Dykes, Councillor Yen, and Councillor Woods. They may be along later in the meeting. Councillor I have an apology from Councillor Wood and also okay. Councillor Collins. Okay. No to pen. Mm. Item 2, declarations of interest. Councillor Cutler. See, I thought you said Captain, but it's My apologies, Chair. It's item number five, and it is, sorry, I had it and I've lost it again. It is, just be on it. Item number five on page 28, it's Bar Town and Rural Trust, and I think it's declare an interest because my husband is part of that, but I don't think it's enough that I need to leave the meeting. I just want to declare an interest just for the evening. There's no other ones. Move on to item three. Minute of meeting on 17th of January 2017. It's here for approval. Can we take this as a correct minute? Agreed. And we'll now move on to the main business of the meeting. Uh, item four. Scrutiny review, town and village improvements, desktop review of the property and public realm. This report provides members with the information we requested on the role of building standards, the local development plan, register social landlords, public realm projects as part of our debate at the last committee meeting. Members will recall we asked for information regarding the role of building standards and derelict buildings, and this is detailed in Appendix 1. We also agreed that we needed to consider strengthening the link to the sustainability of our town and villages centres through the local development plan. The role of registered social landlords through the strategic housing investment plan is summarised in Appendix 3 and details a number of projects that are being proposed for both small and large scale developments that involve town centre living. Appendix 4 details a number of projects that have been completed to improve the public realm across our region in the last five years. You will see that more than £9 million has been invested as part of the programme of regeneration. However, as the evaluation of these projects has yet to take place, we are unable to quantify any benefits that the projects may have given. Gillian is here to answer any questions arising from the report. Um, Happy to take questions from other members or if other members would like to make any points. Councillor Gilroy. In fact, it is, it's on the last bullet point on page six, which is it's about the evaluation process and the amount of money that's been committed over the last five years. And I just I just wonder if I hope we're not just spending this money to make us to make it feel good. We need to to know there's quite a lot of money, nine million pounds. Uh, has it actually made a difference uh, financially? Is it been money well spent for what you know? Who is going to assess that and who is going to uh, bring that report back to us? Because we can't just go on spending money if in actual fact it's not making any difference. I'd rather spend money on keeping the streets clean and making it make doing that than, than, than projects that don't actually make any difference. We need to know uh, how, how we assess this. Gillian, I know in one of the later reports there's a sort of Scottish government tool or toolkit for doing evaluations of anything. There is, there's um, currently a tool being developed and um, colleagues are working with the Scottish government to develop that tool at the moment and the have every intention of evaluating these projects once that tool's properly um, brought together. At the moment, there is no evaluation of the single projects that have been completed. They see them more as part of a programme of regeneration. 
and so therefore we'll be evaluating the program once that's complete. Sorry, Chair, I, I said it's good I don't think we can spend that amount of money. I don't think we can commit to spend any more money if we do not know. And to say that there is a, 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 a means by which it's going to be assessed and everything is, is all well and good, but we've got no timeline on that. We don't know how it's going to be done. We don't know how it's going to be reported back. And we don't actually know what the questions are that we should be asking. So I, I find it uh, very unsatisfactory. One, that. one of the big problems is if we didn't do it, you know, if you're talking about economic regeneration and bringing more people in, if we didn't do it, would we have seen a greater fall? And you can't actually determine, you know, I think one of the reports says internet trading is 12%, we've lost something like 27% from Dumfries Town Centre. Now, if we didn't do the improvements, would we have lost 35% or would we have only lost 12%? We don't know. I think that's one of the problems. If you do something, what's the effect you've had? Has it slowed down the decline or has it speeded up? And I think it would be difficult to evaluate. If we do nothing, then we can always say, well, we didn't wait to spend the money. But if we don't do something, are we going to see an increased reduction in sales from shops in the high streets? Uh, well, I, I, I'm sort of agreeing with you that yeah, it's difficult I, I to assess. But well, the, the, the term that's coming um, to mind is not the, the cheap, which yeah. actually I quite like. It doesn't make me buy no. anything in Lockerbie because the sheep are there. But does it make people feel better? I mean, has anybody asked the people of Lockerbie if that's a good thing to have in the centre of the town? Are they being maintained? Do they look good still? I don't know. I'm not afraid. Do a do wash. You know, you know, do a wash. Well, who does that? Do you know, there's been nothing worse than things that are not maintained and looked after because then you look a bit dilapidated and it, 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 I just. I think we just have put money at it and we haven't thought it through. Lana? Just um, in terms of the, the comments that Councillor Gilroy is making, at the previous committee there was quite a debate about evaluation of these mm -hmm. projects and it was, it was a later report, but it was one of the things that the committee decided was that whether the, the words are right or whether they need to strengthen, but certainly the, one of the recommendations that emerged through that debate was about these projects need to be evaluated and their impact assessed to see if they meet the criteria that members set in agreeing to the investment in the first place. Whether that's as part of a programme or individually, that would be set out as part of the investment decision as well. So there's quite a strong recommendation yeah. from this committee that's emerged as part of the debate. So to reassure you that certainly it's not the first time it's come up because yeah, the short run improvement yeah. scheme itself, which was a safe yeah. thing, hadn't been evaluated either. So it's, it's, it is a quite a strong recommendation from this committee that's emerged about evaluation, having that done, understanding at the front what the impact you intended from the investment, whatever that might be, to see if that was realised. So all of those kind of points you've made, I think, would be pertinent to that recommendation. I think it would be quite difficult to assess, because I can think of three sort of public realm improvements we've done. One's the spring at PG1, which I would say was public realm. When we did it, I thought, I don't know if that's a good idea, but now I would miss it if it wasn't there because I actually think it's. Good. I, don't know, I don't know if it's no, good it's art or not, but I would miss it and I, I think it's part of the area. One that doesn't do anything for me either way is the venom where we put in new stones, but then I don't suffer from the fact that eh, I wear high heels. Therefore, I don't worry about falling off pavements and stuff like that. It didn't affect me that way, so it didn't make any difference to me one way or the other. But the one that I don't like is the one down at Botman, the Venom, where it's a, quite a low, uh, it's like a, a, yeah. a wave. Yeah. Uh, the amount of times I've tripped over that because it doesn't stand out, yeah. because your eyes are sort of here, not looking at the ground. Yeah. And that's when I would say it doesn't appeal to me. So that's three different things we've done. One's positive, one's neither positive nor negative, and other ones uh, I don't like, so it's negative. But that's from my point of view, as someone else, they might like the one at the bottom of the red on like stones, not like the it's, It could be subjective. Uh, Marion and then Alistair. Thank you, Chair.
share is in fact is absolutely correct. We do tend to, to back these projects and then we, we don't really follow up to see how we progress and, and how we're doing and what the difference has made. So I totally agree. And but looking at Stranraer, I don't think I'll be saying something in big surprise that there's one or two there that is debatable whether there was a proper decision or not. But the decision has been made now, so the money has to be spent and I'm sure then so we've got to take it forward to make the, the best of a bad job on some occasions. Um, but you perhaps it's totally right. I think the quicker we, we either this or the next council um, check on these projects as once they're finished or in progress and I think the better and then we can we're able to tell the public when they ask to so. Alistair, thanks Chair. A couple of points on page nine um, of an act if it wasn't aware of the building's recovery of expenses act. 2014. I found that interesting in that it says we can place a charging order on the property to recover any outstanding expenses that were reasonably incurred and understandably, however, this is this may not only become actionable on the sale of the building. Um, I would like more clarity on the legislation. Uh, talk, you hear talk of compulsory purchase. I take it that's a hard one to do. Um, is that a limit of our powers, basically, to place a charging order on this? Your building is unsafe, we've made it safe, therefore you owe us this money, and the owner might live in, in Hong Kong or Singapore, I believe, and say, so what? Uh, and that's the end. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not paying. So uh, that might be decades before that building passes out of there. Ownership. So is that is that as far as we can go? In terms of the dangerous buildings part of it, yes. Mm -hmm. If we were regenerating an area and you wanted to do something with that area, mm -hmm. then I think we could look at compulsory purchase. But if you don't have a use for an asset, mm -hmm. I don't think we don't have the sort of the same ability to move that. So that's me speaking from my limited knowledge, and maybe somebody can give us a read that more expertise on compulsory purchase. In terms of, um, I think the question in the last meeting was around um, unsafe buildings. Yes. Um, and that's, that's the extent here is as far as we can go. Compulsory yeah. purchases would be, would be happy part of a scheme or um, planning consents, etc. And there's obviously a whole piece of legislation, numbers of uh, things that we'd have to do, but we couldn't, wouldn't be appropriate to buy a building because we didn't like how it was. Um, the, the, you can't choose the aesthetics um, of it, and, and the dangerous buildings um, requirements on the Building Scotland Act focus on the safety of the building, not whether it's it looks nice. So we couldn't take action in terms of asking them to improve it or deal with it. It's simply about the safety for the public. So we can't just say your buildings are right, a blight on, 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 on quite a pleasing street. So we're going to compulsory purchase it and. Uh, do it up and rent it out for flats or whatever, and uh, we'll pay you back if we no, can't have done that. But uh, it's going to be part of a bigger scheme. There is a planning legislation, I can't remember, is it a 179 or something, where you can put a planning order on it to have it tidied That's up. That's what's done, that one, is it? Mm -hmm. It could be, or is it section 79, it's something like that. It was done down, was it quite long? The grapes in Whitehall, a pub, former pub, whereby they were asked to tidy it up. And there was, I can't remember what the act was, but it's one of the planning acts where they were asked to do it. Um, that can be a case of you can ask them to do it, and if they don't do it, you can then take them to court. My understanding, the planning authority aren't that keen on enforcing these, would rather have uh, people willing to do things rather than having to force them to do it. But uh, that's the only one I know of. I can't remember what they had to do to either make it safe or tidy it up, but it was a derelict sort of building and they asked them to tidy it up. And your colleague, Alistair Davis, would be able to answer a bit more uh, uh, I, I thoroughly know. than me because he was involved in it at the time. I know to you for, for quite a few years he was always moaning about the grapes, but he stopped moaning. Sorry, not moaning, but it's a little bit, uh, what shall I say? Uh, he, he was expressing his concerns. His views.
money have we committed? I mean, I see on page 17, I don't quite get the adding up on the two figures that have been across the million dollars, but my mind's not really. So, we, but we seem to have committed to two things as general there at the bottom, but I just wonder if we've committed any more monies to be spent on regeneration. Have we got a, I mean, what fund, do we have a fund for that, or does that have where does that come from? There's a asset class in economic development, um, and it would be the decision of the EEI committee about how that money was allocated. Um, and I understand that that would be helpful to the new council to decide on. So, what I'm wondering, Chair, is if we are able to send a, a comment that perhaps before we spend too much more money on projects, we need to find out if it's been. Well spent, but, but you know, somehow. Because I think people have brought up concerns about just spending money and not knowing whether it's been effective or not. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether for a future council that would be useful that there was something from this committee, because we have we are scrutinising it, that perhaps it needs to be we need to use that. What did you call it, Janine? Um, in the Scottish government, they're doing a they're doing an evaluation methodology. But you've no time scale on that, have you? Sorry? You've no time scale on that, have you? Uh, there, there are some that are in existence already, but I know that colleagues are working um, with Scottish Towns to, to develop a, a further one from Lemon across Scotland. Uh -huh. Shall we go to the question of Mr. Hume? One of the recommendations in the paper that will go to council is that this needs to be worked up by its employees to allow us to evaluate the effectiveness of the schemes. Um, yeah. I can't remember which one of the recommendations it is, but I think we've got some recommendations. Okay, so we've got that there, so that's where we're, and that's strong enough to, to take forward. Yeah. Okay, so we can make sure the wording is strong enough, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Um, now, so I'll concentrate. I'll start. Thanks, Chair. Um, page 15, the Town Centre Affordable Homes Fund. I think this is a very good idea. And uh, I see it's coming to Housing Subcommittee this month. Not on Housing Sub, but it's my earnest wish that members will take the advice of officers. Although uh, it's always dangerous to predict. Thank you. Thank you. Was, uh, an allocation made in the budget, the administration's budget on Tuesday to address the funding for it. So mm -hmm. the funding is there uh, to allow this to start. I think. You know, I would take it that it's a uh, desire of the members to look at it. If they've got the money there, they'll look to make good use of it. I was just going to say that if we go through the sort of appendices, we've got the building standards. Uh, local development plan. So the issues in there that members had. So we're looking to think in the recommendations how we can make planning easier for uh, businesses in the town centre to you know brand themselves or get up and running. So that's coming through. Is there any issues within the plan here? Private and social housing, appendix two. It's something similar, simplifying planning zones. It's just a thing in, in the, on page six, there's a thing called a plot passport. Model. How to plan for as the project of Scotland the development of a plot passport model for small and single unit sites. Is that going to be implemented soon? I don't know if get that is, but is that is that to rent to find sites for, for, for single plots or is it to help them get through the planning? It's actually a bid that we put in to um, the Scottish Government to be part of that pilot. It's um, the premise is that with self-filled plots they would come with a passport which acts as a building permit and it specifies restrictions. So it's easier on single build and, and small scale builds. But d presumably our building standards, we've still got to sign off these buildings and things. It's yes. Not, yeah, yes. You know, it's not just, we don't want to build And this is just a bit that we have in at the moment to be part of that pilot. 
it's, it's something new. Okay. Okay. Role of the strategic housing investment plan. Anything like that? Cunningham Housing Association. Who are they? There'll be an RSL from, I would think, South Yorkshire. Is that? Because they seem to be. Yes. Rather than we'd expect a sort of. Perhaps um, GHP to be in here. Yeah, it's been a feature fairly recently of some of the other housing associations. So they're not restricted in terms of where they operate, but there's opportunities uh -huh. that others don't want. So certainly there are, there are others. And some of them specialise in certain types of housing as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So Huffman Housing, mm -hmm. which is based yes. in North West of Priest, they've got that site. So. Association because I think uh, when we lost control of council housing, and people still need to talk about the council when they talk about the DHP. I don't know how long it's going to take before they still do that. Uh, it's, mm, but uh, you know, uh, I welcome the diversity in terms of uh, hopefully they'll drive each other's standards up or, or even a more open conversation with the council in terms of because we have the responsibility for housing. Yeah. Most people, for example, we don't we just have to go and say pretty please, basically. Yeah. Yeah. They need to love it what they can. Yeah. Everybody around the well, the members here I think know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Um, is there anything else on the ship? There's various parts. and information detailed in appendix 1, 2, 3 and 4. Are there any points that we raised there through that discussion? This year we were quite happy and then something. Um, most of Maybe Mr. Mr. Patsy wants to include. You know, I think we've got the recommendations coming later to future, to the next Stress it in the yeah, uh, item seven. Yeah, that, that's fine. Item so item seven. It's item six, I think. They've got the recommendations yeah. going to the full council. Okay. That's good. So if we're accepting the evidence, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Consider and accept the further yeah. items. Yeah. And are we happy to agree this should be added to the evidence gathered for the Town and College Improvement Scrutiny Review? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. <coughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just summarise. Yeah. Um, so, members, if I can, 2.1 considered and accepted further evidence and information in Appendix 1, 2, 3, and 4. And 2.2, that I agree this should be added to the evidence gathered for the Town and Village Improvement Scrutiny Review. Now move on to item 5. This is the desktop review of Town and Village signage with regard to the same uh, scrutiny review. The members will recall we asked for some further information on the development of signage in our Town and Village centres. 
At the moment, our signs have a wide range of sizes and styles within the towns and villages across our region, and these would benefit from a review to achieve more consistency. We also asked to find out if there are examples of mobile applications being developed to help visitors find their way around within our regional towns and whether there is any learning from these which could be used to help others promote interest in our area. This report provides us with further information on these matters. Gillian again to answer the easy questions and uh, I'll ask members if there's any points they would like to raise. Alistair? Well, sir, I've been, I think the best word to use is I've been deaved with complaints from a few constituents about signage and real time on in bus shelters. But I now see that um, we can't afford it anymore, so they've gone. Um, I always quote my my brother-in-law brother in, in Edinburgh who sits in his, in his house and looks at the, the real-time sign on the bus stop outside and then gets his coat on when it's two minutes to go. And we had we had signage, which I think, electronic signage, which I think was worse than useless because it just replicated the paper uh, sign which was usually seen in the bus shelters and, it, and, and if the bus was late, the sign would disappear. Yeah. Uh, I think that's worse than useless. Uh, the only advantage would be in a dark shelter where you couldn't read the paper sign. But if you're a regular user of the bus, uh, you would know anyway. Uh, you should know. Um, um, so it's a shame that we're not having real time. But uh, if we're, if it's a choice between, and I thought it would be fairly cheap once an electronic system was set up and running, it wouldn't be. Uh, that expensive to maintain, but I'm told no, it is expensive to maintain. So I know we're not Edinburgh. Uh, it's a pity, but there we are. And uh, maybe sometime in the future, when when the economy has an upturn and councillors are washed with cash, we can uh, reintroduce it. I think I'll see. Yeah, uh, I know. It must have been still on when that. But not the last time, I think it was the time before I used it. And watching as the clock, the bus never moved in time. And then I found out that one of the buses had actually broken down up the road, so I had to get, wait for the next one coming. And that's why it was always late. But uh, I, I, it was good to know that within about five or ten minutes a bus would be coming. Um, also, I, someone who stayed out in the, the sticks of the countryside when I was younger. Uh, when it came to buses, you're always 10 minutes before it was meant to arrive and you wait 10 minutes till after mm -hmm. because, you know, things could happen. But it seems to be the case nowadays that uh, everybody wants, I just want to turn up and have the bus drop in front of me at that time. But um, I can understand we're used to that now and therefore maybe that's something that we need to look to the future if we can afford it again. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that's the bus stops one. Any other issues in the bus stops? Car parking signage? I think the one thing I would say in Don Place that you had a sign that showed where there was free spaces, but unfortunately if you've got that, I think uh, there's other issues you have to bring into the equation as to how you monitor if all the spaces are taken. <laughs> Three hours in, they're available. Oh, I see. Yes, you know, there's, <laughs> there's like, if you've got a car park where it's full, it says full, <laughs> but there's spaces at another one free. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, I think it's, sorry. Yeah. If you look at page 23, you know, um, they always say that if you get too many signs, people don't see things they don't register you know it's a case of the more you have the less the key yeah. yeah and we're beginning to get that on some of those you know there's quite a lot going on from where the loos are to at the bottom of here to the hospital to the information you know I, I just don't know I don't know whether that's a, a good way of, of, of directing people because it depends what you're looking for I suppose but it doesn't 
I'm not on planes a lot, I think, and, and I see that it's uh, council officers uh, who are wanting a more coordinated approach. And I just wondered what exactly they mean by that. I mean, what, what, how do we see it? We're going to have to change quite a lot of our size with the new hospital coming in. That's going yeah. to be an opportunity, presumably, to re kind of redirect people. Um, I don't know. I just think that's a mayor. I think that looks like a muddle, to be honest. And then on page 24, that, this one at the bottom right-hand side there, the People's Project, for instance, I just wonder if that makes any difference to litter at all. And yet, you know, I didn't even plan permission for that. But you know, I don't think I don't know that that adds anything to what we're trying to do. I mean, um, I mean road consent because it's a road sign, I don't know. I think the other ones on page twenty-four are, are, are fine. I think people look up to those as you know, directing you, and I think they're good. I think it's these big ones that are the problem. And I don't know, you have got a lot of information to go up when you come into traffic lights, that's allowed to be a shadow of that. But I don't know whether it's the best way. I was thinking if they're plenty of time in advance so that, because people usually look, well, it's that lane and one or this lane, and if they're too near the junction, that's when you don't get time to get into, and that's when you start getting caught. Uh, any well, information on points, parts is... Yeah, I just wonder what a coordinated approach will be. What are they looking for? What are the council officers looking for? I think there's a recognition that there's no um, no need within the council for these types of signs, and that's why we're, we're seeing a different sort of sizes and types across the region. There's nobody actually... So, so, who, puts, so who decides in... I don't know, um, Moffat to put a sign up to direct you to the park or to the... It will depend on where the sign's going. Um, I know that in lights of Stranraer that signs have been put up, but um, not necessarily um, asking through the council. It depends where they're put up. If they're put up on the roads, yeah, we have traffic acts that um, oh, okay. can take what they should be. But if they're not on roads, then um, they can be... I think the people's are projects not, can. Sorry, Chair, is there not a planning <coughs> issue when you're going up to not to be or I mean I, I think there's road consent you need to put a sign up, but I don't know if you need planning. You know the brown signs mm. the tourists, you have to apply to, yes, you have to pay for those. the government mm. if it's so on just a trunk road. Um, there's a, a new brown sign just down here. Uh, and I would think that'd be a road if you pay, is it £1,500, the cost of putting it up and advertising, etc., then if it's agreed, you can have one. So I don't think there's planning issues with that. But if you put a standalone sign in the middle of a field, mm. you then need planning consent mm. for that. But that, that People's Project one, did that just go up? And how did that appear? Mm. I think it would go through the, the roads and have to. I think any signage, my experience of that project is that there was a sort of consent from the member so, that it was going to be positioned. I think the issue from officers is that there are uh, signs for uh, pedestrians to tell them where to go in the town centre and you can see the differences in style and format of those, so points of interest, toilets. There are uh, road signs which do go through the, the traffic orders. But these are all done by different people, and then there's obviously signage from tourism, there's signage from uh, businesses themselves as part of their own um, requirements. Then there's parking signage, and I know that was one of the things members picked up the last time about making sure that information was consistent about charges or otherwise disc parking, etc. Um, and it was in different formats, maybe not as clear as it should be in different car parks. So all of these things are dealt with by different parts of the council. And I think the officers and Jim's approach to them to understand how that was working was that they kind of they deal with their bit of it but not necessarily all work collectively alongside that and with other agencies that may have a, an interest and in, to your point, Councillor Gilroy, about the, the changes to the hospital and all the signages that will need to change as part of that. That's, there's an opportunity at least in the increase particularly um, to, to really address that and make it more consistent. Mm -hmm. 
There's no designated officer to monitor this. I mean, what's to stop people just shoving up signs? I mean, I'm, on my visits to the Republic of Ireland, we come to any town and it's, it's a, a wash with signs inviting you to go to O'Shaughnessy's supermarket or whatever and to uh, ask about it. Monitors, I always put them up. Uh, uh, I, I don't think we should have a free for all, but because uh, I, I suppose there's issues of road safety for driving, although I yeah, don't know if that's overstated. But, um, I think we do have planning who will monitor mm -hmm. advance advertisements. Um, one I can think of was Dulscoin Farm, mm -hmm. they put a big sign up on the side of their building, mm -hmm. and that was deemed not to be acceptable by the Roads Authority because it could be a danger. Uh, so I think they had to scale it down a bit. Um, well, Garden Wise, they've applied for planning for signs. There's been signs applied for other areas as well. There used to be a sign and then that building was at Patties or the other one, the other site. And it was made to be removed because it didn't conform to the planning laws. So they do take some consideration. So you, you have some sort of limitation on that, but um, if it's a temporary sign, i.e. there's a fair on or a car boot sale on, they'll let you away with that. So Can I come back to yeah. Well, yeah, obviously a big one in the gable end, like in the town centre or near town would be noticeable, but I recall some time ago that uh, we had something for planning and it was about a sign for the Wildfell and Wetlands Trust and uh, down near Bank, past Bank End and uh, it was just asked the question how long has that sign been up and I was told two years so it took two years for it to be noticed or reported. Uh, so that's one of the things that I don't know if we've who physically goes out and goes around mm -hmm. every street but uh, or every road, but if it is reported, then somebody will act upon it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. It's a thing that you said there. And also at Stromlassie, there is signs on, on the roadsides. Um, that, but I think it's more to do with the fact that if we don't deem them as being dangerous to, to motorists on the road or anybody walking for that matter, if, if they don't get reported, they don't tend to bother. I'm not saying they've been ignored, but they don't tend to bother if, if, if anybody reports an issue. But just a prime example of, of one that, that was kind of in the back of this paper here, one of the, the charities has put in a, a new sign up and it was a railway station in Stromart, um, replacing the one that just doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, and they're doing it in combination with the, the um, Scott Rail, um, Senna, and, and also other. Well, now it's going up in like the seventh day to let this up, and, and it's. But they didn't need planning permission, but there was something else to do in that area. They had to get, they had to speak to another, but it wasn't planning, it was another one. Another one very good with the plan and stuff, but it's, that's a prime example of, of being on private ground rather than being on council ground, or yeah. part of the S could be council, but where it's situated actually. Isn't. Yeah, so that's probably a kind of example in how they come in. Yeah. Anything else on the signage? <coughs> Mobile apps? <coughs> Once we get Wi Fi and 4G in that, we might be able to use them. <laughs> And visit Stringer. I, I just, I really want to just take the opportunity to probably thank Gillian for this report. Um, on behalf of these organisations, that asked me at this meeting if I was able to, um, to pass on my thanks because they're absolutely over the moon at the positive, of, uh, the positive report that Gillian just put up from the board. Um, they work extremely hard and, and they say they start it off with their own lot and their own money. And, and they have, unfortunately, they have had dealings before the council, but hasn't worked out so great. 
but I just they have asked me if I had the opportunity to thank Gillian very much for the report and, and it's so accurate and I couldn't have put it better myself um, and I'm hoping now that they um, that the council has an understanding and also provide that maybe there is opportunities there that they can work with them in the future. But that's basically that was all I wanted to just take the opportunity to do this. Thank you, Chair. So if we go back to the recommendations, members are asked to consider the evidence from the desk of the year of time and village signage in appendix one. They can consider the evidence. Uh, 2.2, consider the evidence from the desktop review of online mapping of, of direction information as detailed. Appendix 2, look at that. Uh, and are members happy to agree this should be added to the evidence gathered for the town and village improvement scrutiny review? Mm -hmm. Just confirm that. Yes, confirm members have agreed with the recommendations and we'll go out to further discussions. Um, now move on to item 6, Town and Village Improvement, Observations and Draft Recommendations. The members are presented with draft recommendations for the Town and Village Scrutiny Review and should note that these include evidence from the reports discussed earlier in the agenda. The report also reflects the findings in the areas we discussed and agreed at the last meeting. It is my aim that, subject to the review and consideration of this committee, we are able to present these recommendations to full council on the 28th of March 2017. Gillian is here again to answer the questions. And is there any points members would like to raise? The initial budget was 200,000. Could it all be used? Yeah, that's correct. And so that, has, so that uh, improvement scheme has now, there's no money and is no longer available? There is um, a fund of around 80,000 that were stopped that they've um, put in for this year going forward. Um, it's, <coughs> it's currently being used as well, but the full 200,000 is coming. Just, um, in the bullet points that you know local businesses are not terribly aware of the of the project, you know, and in some cases there were applications were complicated. Did you did you think that's a fair assessment of the system that, that you know that we're not made aware of it? That was the feedback when we went out to the different um, mm -hmm. towns and villages and asked them. Um, mm -hmm. We asked different organisations if they were aware that these were available. And we got different feedback depending on where we were. Um, for instance, Dalbiti had a, a group who had taken Absolutely. on the whole sort of project and yes. had um, leafleted um, all the businesses, mm -hmm. and that got a really good take up. So there was different approaches depending, and not they weren't always aware that they could apply for the shopfront improvement grants. Because I'm just thinking, you know, the likes of Kikubu, for instance, I know they have a chamber of commerce, but do you ever, do you contact them and, and tell them to, that it's available so they can put out something to their members? I think that's where we would, um, where the recommendation would come in that we're needing to contact yes. um, group, community groups, business yeah. groups, people like that, that would be able to get the information out to, yeah. to the shop, the, yeah. the shopkeepers themselves. Yeah. I want to go through, through the recommendations of, on the bottom of page 33 and within the appendix there are ones we can pick up. We've got recommendation one which is public realm projects in town centres should contribute to sustainability of centres and communities and what we should be looking to enforce on that is I think the town centre first principles. Well that's, well, that's where we get back to assessing whether it does it or not. That comes in under R7, recommendation 7, okay. which is the evaluation. Okay. Okay. So do we feel that if we are doing regeneration works, we should be looking at attracting people to town centres? Yeah. 
I think that's an even point there. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Recommendation two: Set the criteria based on approach used by Renfrewshire Council should be adopted for inclusion into any future shop run improvement schemes in Dumfries and Galloway, and the criteria should help prioritise projects of positive influence to take up of the scheme. In addition, a review of the application process should be undertaken to ensure that the process is as simple as possible. I think that's what I was saying in the past week already based on that, so we're happy with that one. Recommendation three. Uh, the council's contribution needs to be more visible in town and village improvement scheme with consistent council branding included within material relating to any future schemes. Councillor Wicks. How would that be done? Would that be like um, the European Union or the Office used to see signs that uh, are funded by the European Union? I suppose it could have. If you look at a lot of the street furniture and the town centre, it's sort of a black pole with sort of a gold band. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be seen as council sort of stuff rather than big tops that are red with yellow bands and that will not go there. Just <laughs> well, sadly, it's here the new one, black and gold, is the preferred option. I would have preferred to stick to sort of like that. But that's the element of this. <laughs> <laughs> it is a town centre improvement. It is an improvement. Um, so it's a sort of if there's something done, we know it's been the council that's been involved in it. I think that's the idea. Well, it's important to see that I think the council gets credit. I mean, I mean we get, we've had a lot of flack over yeah. the years, and uh, sometimes it's become almost a, 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 a thing to do, just a nice mm -hmm. snap at the council. I mean, but yeah. we should take it when it's our fault, or we fall short, but uh, when we do something that's right, we should. Should get a pat on the back now and again. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the chair also it, it it would highlight the fact that there is a scheme and that other people can approach the council. You know, oh gosh, somebody got their shop front done and it says mm -hmm. on the thing, you know, park from this side and this is the other side. Yeah. yeah. Well, they think, well, gosh, I might have, you know, if, it, if, if we're having trouble getting people to realise it, there is a fund there, and that's maybe another tool in the box. So we're happy with that one. Uh, recommendation four, easy to access information should be available to a wide range of sources, including elected members, to ensure that any future shop front improvement scheme is promoted locally and that take up is maximised across the region. That continues in the same theme of better sort of communication. Yeah, we're happy with that one as well. Five, continuation of the shop front improvement scheme should be encouraged as a positive contributory factor to a suite of initiatives and projects, which together combine to make a significant impact to appearance. So I get a feeling that sometimes maybe we should have seven before we have some of the other ones, just that we get the evaluation then. Is it a positive? Mm -hmm. The appearance will always be, I would think, you know, if you've got something that's not terribly attractive, you try and make it more attractive, you'll improve the appearance, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know what other members think. No, I agree. Mm. But we're happy with the so idea that we should be looking to mm -hmm. yeah. do that. Block applications should be encouraged for future shop front improvement schemes to help achieve a more significant impact. This was based on the Dalbeatty scheme, uh, whereby it seemed that they took three or four shops at once, or the whole street, I can't remember, and it actually had a, a more impact than doing one here, two or three maybe not done, and then another one somewhere else. So I was happy to endorse that recommendation. Yeah, just, just, I mean, that's all very well when you've got a, a group in the town that will do it. It's not, it's not every town that works like that. Yeah. You know, so you can't, you, you can't put too big an emphasis on it. I think it's a good way of going forward, without a doubt. Yeah. But equally, if it's just a village or something, there's just, a, you know, maybe there's just a couple of shops that need doing it. They'll do yeah. it off, they'll do it off their own back because it's the nature of, yeah. of individual shops. If you know what I mean, they don't work together. But I think it's a good idea if you can get a chamber of commerce in the town up and running. I think it does work. Well, it's 
approved it would. So I think what we're actually saying is we agree with it, but not to the detriment of single applications yeah. as they come forward as well. Yeah, yeah it's not the only way. Yeah. Based on its own lot, maybe yeah. to each other. Right. Then we have recommendation seven: evaluation of individual projects, including the shop front scheme, should be undertaken in accordance with the methodologies and Scottish government guidance developed for that purpose. Do you want to strengthen that? I I have to see it. Was the shop front improvement scheme? Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but that's. Part of this is funded by the shop itself. Yes. So I, I don't have such a big problem of an evaluation of that because because it's not just all council money. <coughs> I have a bigger problem with the public realm projects, which are all funded, they're not funded, the shops don't tend to contribute to those, do they? So I think that's where we need to know whether our, our money is being well spent. Yeah. Right? Um, don't have quite such a problem with the shop front scheme because I think people all see that the family shop is a good thing. Um, but I'm not sure whether it is that. I think the issue was in the comparison work that you did with other local authorities. There were slightly different ways of doing those sorts of schemes. Mm -hmm. So it was almost to go through a formal evaluation to see whether there was any adjustment to the current scheme that make it, would make it more effective. It wasn't done. So uh -huh. we brought forward information to this committee about those other schemes and you've recommended the Revolution Council approach, but is there any other adjustments that would make it a much even more successful scheme and, and, and to evaluate it properly, I think, mm -hmm. with those who have been in receipt of the, the money alongside their own investments. Mm -hmm. um, so that was why it was kind of, it's not just the, the, the public realm, but also the, the shop front improvement scheme, but for very different reasons, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, and also, Councillor Gilroy had asked at the first item that we discussed, item four, um, that you were clear from your perspective that perhaps at the end of this, that that work should done prior to further schemes, prior to further schemes being proposed and progressed through the economic development. Well, or, or is that to say, I don't think you can, we can keep spending money if we don't know if it's well spent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's all. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not against it, uh, and in fact, I, I, mean, I, I, I welcome any improvement, obviously. But um, you know, when when our budgets are tight, we've got to know what we're spending is is, is, is delivering what we want it to, mm -hmm. and you know, we have to do that. Is it sorry, Chair? Is it, is, is it when you evaluate it? I mean, who who decides what? What we're looking for. Who says that actually we want it to be monetary, or we want it as a feel good factor, or we want it as an event, whether it's encouraged um, people to come and invest in the area? How, I mean, what are we looking for exactly? You set yourself parameters, um, you know, and look at all of those points. You know, if it's making people feel good, therefore people may actually come to that area more. It helps the economic, but you would wait, hopefully, the various items, you know. You might say feel-good factors, 40% of your assessment, economic, 30%, what was the third one you mentioned there, it would be the, uh, the other 30%, you could wait it that way. Or oh, whether I brought other yeah. people in to want to have a business yeah. there. And, and or you might wait them differently, depending on your perspective. But who decides if it's a joint evaluation with Scottish Government, who's going to decide on what we want to know as opposed to what they want to know? We do the same thing, don't they? The, the evaluation methodology for uh, programmes within town and village centres is the, it's the methodology Scottish Government have been developing rather than the decision or the outcome from it. You're absolutely right, and I think maybe there is something missing from the recommendations around. Um, asking at the, the start of a project when you're deciding to do that thing that members clearly set out the outcomes they wish to achieve particularly as they relate i think to what we're saying visitors and impact on town and village centers and the businesses that operate there and that's that's be able to define that at the start and whether it has any impact that you want to achieve and that would probably i think then reshape what the 
to sell the investment and, and what it was being spent on and um, a clearer focus to those projects and that basis. So, so can we rec put that in the recommendation that before the start of any more projects we have the, the criteria set down as what we hope to achieve from it? Or what is expected by us or by shop contributions or uh, just something, because then you can measure it a bit easier, can't you? Because we're not measuring, we can't really measure anything for these level ones because we haven't set out any criteria. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. we're just, it's That's rather a waste of time. We've spent the money, we've done That's our job. Okay, so put into either an extra recommendation or just incorporate that one as to, you need to have a starting point so that you can actually yes. evaluate yes. against that starting point. Yes. Members will recall in the special chair of audit committee will recall that one of the points that was made around some projects um, in this area was about being absolutely clear about what was intended with the investment so the members could ascertain whether that had actually been delivered. So this isn't this will be um, reinforcing I think a recommendation that's already been made um, by the external auditors. I, do, I, I, I just think we need to make sure it goes in. I, I, I don't know where I mean, Rona will, will have a better. I think uh, it, it, my recommendation to members would be that it would be an additional recommendation yeah. because it's at the start of the project, yeah. not the evaluation at the end. Okay. But they are linked. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it would give it clarity. Yeah. So. Is, is, uh, are the recommendations in order of importance or are they just randomly done? Does that matter make any difference? I think they've been ordered against the objective, she said, but we can reorder them for, I think, sense. I think you've been very clear that just in terms of logic that we need reorder, so we will do that. Right. Um, so, R7, that's his comments, so sort of added in, and the additional part, it'll be another 11 or whatever. Um, Planning gain should be considered negotiated at the outset of relevant projects to maximise benefits to towns and villages. I think all members were sort of the opinion that where we could get improvements, we should be trying to do that and achieve that for the, the area. So, happy with R8. R9. Planning coordination should be improved to ensure signage within the region's towns and villages is consistent and effective. Council has a lead role in coordinating activity across council departments, local communities and other bodies. I suppose it is one of the ones that you could say is a wish list, but our view is we need to look at it from our point of view as to what would be the recommendation we put forward, and it is up to the council on whether they accept that. Okay, so that, okay, I agree, I agree. So, so far they've adopted or agreed the recommendations that we've put forward. Whether they actually implement them or have the finances or manpower to implement them may be another issue. But um, I think we'll leave it in. Okay. Yeah, okay. This word consistent, uh, the devil's in the detail. For example, uh, Dumfries is twinned with Gifhorn, and that's, I think a couple of the approaches into town, you see Dumfries twinned with Gifhorn, but in other roads it's not there. And I asked the question, how is it not there? Well, the sign disappeared. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it would be very important to make a new one or something. Uh, so. It's not Gaelic either, is it? Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't cost that much more. Uh, but, uh, uh, no, we're not going there. Don't get that. I'm going back. It's just. How do you define consistent? Yeah, uh, it's right. just an example. Mm. But it's part of the fact that we want it to be consistent and 
picks up the council to look at actually doing that. I think it thinks signs back where Dumfries and uh, University Town to get them back out because that, that actually got a talking point. I might bring folk to the town rather than the purple ones. Yeah. So were you not in the council when that happened? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll look to put that in and it's something that consistent and effective maybe differing views from differing members and differing interpretations and if we did introduce Gaelic subtitles it would have to be all of the consistent English underneath them so we understand what the Gaelic says. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nobody speaks it. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you want to emphasise that it should <laughs> rather than it should it always be consistent? I don't think we can do that. Mm. If, you're lo- if you're going to allow, sorry, if you're going to allow the people's project to stick up a yeah. I think that's at the bottom of page 24. Um, either they're allowed to do that or they're not. Yeah. So it has to become really prescriptive, which I don't think particularly is really yeah. possible, if I'm being honest. So we'll just stick with the wording as is on our mind. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Mm. R10, can you continue to support the proposals within? The strategic housing investment plan for large and small scale projects in towns and villages across the whole. Sorry. Can I crave your indulgence and say something more about signage? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> um, the Dock Park, I'm told that uh, signage is not very effective in that um, it's all right for, uh, it's at the level that two year olds and dogs can read. But neither of them can read, neither of these groups can read. Uh, so if it's to be informative, it should be. I suppose that would come in with being consistent and effective. Yeah. It needs to be effective. Yeah. yeah. So that does take care of that one. And if we go to 10, Strategic Housing Investment Plan, <coughs> I suppose we're happy with that sort of development that is uh, delivered across the whole region. Mm-hmm. And then there was the one that we picked up earlier that will come in for us accordingly. Um, right. Go to the recommendations. We were asked to review and agree the evidence and analysis so far from the scrutiny review detailed in the appendix. That's what so I followed all the recommendations. Members quite happy with that? Yeah. Great. Right. And 2.2, review and agree the draft that the draft recommendations reported. In the appendix will be presented to full council on 28th of March as amended. Great. What say do you just want to? So, um, an additional recommendation would be that it's recommended for the start of future projects. Members clearly set a criteria of what they wish to achieve from the project, and this would enable members to evaluate the success of the project. That way, okay. Success and effectiveness. Success and effectiveness. Happy with those. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Item seven. Any other business team budget by the chairman due to the decision? I don't have any in front of me today. This is our last committee. Absolutely. And I thank everyone for the attendance of this meeting and the previous meetings they've been able to attend. Um, and for those who are seeking re election, good luck. For those who have decided that now's the time to 
hang up the uh, Petrol Act. Uh, good luck to that as well. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.